Good morning, Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to day two of this special edition, the 20th annual Doha Forum. I'm Rida Fakhri, and it's my pleasure to pick up where we left off yesterday. Day one of the Doha Forum saw a few newsworthy statements made from here on stage, uh, one of them by the EU's top foreign policy official, Jose Borrell, who stated that the parties involved in the negotiations to renew and revive the JCPOA, the Iran nuclear deal from which the Trump administration unilaterally withdrew, are inching closer to an agreement. But we also know that in this type of negotiation, nothing is agreed until everything is agreed. And with the current state of affairs between the United States and Russia, are we really inching closer towards an agreement. Well, this is where we begin today with our first newsmaker interview. It is with Dr. Kamal Kharazi, former foreign minister of the Islamic Republic of Iran and currently the president of the Strategic Council on Foreign Relations. The interview will be conducted by Becky Anderson, who is the managing editor and anchor of Connect the World at CNN. Welcome to you both. microphone is there for you, sir. It's very good to have you here. Nice to see you. My pleasure. Good morning, everybody. It's uh, wonderful to be kicking off day two uh, of this event. Dr. Kamal Harazi, you are a former Iranian foreign minister, ambassador to the United Nations, and currently a foreign policy advisor to the Supreme Leader. Let's talk about where we are at with these negotiations. Paused on March the 11th, of course. Yesterday here, Europe's top diplomat, Joseph Borrell, saying that Iran and world powers are, and I quote him here, very close to an agreement. And the EU envoy, Enrique Mora, was in Tehran on Saturday, is or will be in Washington on Monday. At this point, do you believe a deal is imminent? Thank you very much. Yes, uh, it's uh, imminent, but it depends on the political will of the United States. Mm -hmm. It was the United States which withdrew from the deal. Of course, I have to mention here that even during Obama administration, new sanctions was put on Europe. Any sanction that Americans have put on Iran has had its economic impact. More than that, even during Obama administration, there was no real movement in economic cooperation between Iran and the West, regardless of the American, which they have their own sanction. Even we had problem in banking relations, mm -hmm. although JCPOA was supposed to solve all of these problems. Even when Europeans, in, uh, after, after uh, Obama administration, when Trump came to the office, and uh, during Trump administration, and when he withdrew from the deal. European countries did not do anything. They promised. Mm -hmm. They promised that they are going to have a, a specific law in European Union that they can support companies that would be imposed, sanctioned by United States as secondary sanction. Did did not happen. They called about a specific transfer operation called Instex that did not work. So it's long history right now that we decided after withdrawal of the United States from the deal 
to reduce our commitments, and that was our right, based on just the way. When they decided to do that, and uh, when the new administration came to the power, we started negotiating with the United right. States. We've got 20 minutes, so this is slightly backward looking. Yeah. I want us to go forward looking, if mm. you don't mind, with the greatest of No, I'm to the point. Yep. I'm to the point right now that right, right now, after this negotiation, mm -hmm. we are very close to the right. signing a deal. How close, though? I, I understand that the, the IRGC is a sticking point. We've heard from the that is one foreign the minister, points. one of the sticking points. It's an important sticking point. So, do you believe that Washington will agree to the delisting of the IRGC as a terrorist organization? What's the, f what do you, what's the feedback that you are hearing? And how will Tehran reciprocate? Does Washington get a public commitment to de-escalation in the Middle East, for example? Does it get a pu public commitment to delist American, senior American figures, Brian Hook, no, these are Pompeo, different, for example? These are different stories. We should not mix these. Why? Based on JCPOA, uh, Americans, uh, I mean, cannot mix other issues to JCPOA. Just based only on nuclear deal. Uh, IRGC, GC, certainly has to be removed from the list. And that's not the only problem. We have around 500 people and institutions sanctioned by the United States. Mm -hmm. And all of these, or part of these, have direct economic impact on relation between Iran and Western countries. Let me give you a hypothetical here. If the IRGC is not delisted by Washington and this deal is wrecked as a result of it because it is a clear sticking point, where will the blame lie in Tehran? I'm not talking about where the blame will lie in Washington, but whose responsibility will it be in Tehran that this deal is not struck when we are so clearly so close? Let's let Americans do that, then we decide. Can you answer the question? Yeah. Who's, where will the blame lie in Tehran? Because this is a major issue for Washington. Yes. And it's, a, 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 it's very clear, this is a sticking point for Tehran at this point. I'm just asking, in Tehran, where will the blame lie? Blame on what? The blame for the IRGC becoming a sticking point. Yeah, certainly, you know, uh, J JC, I, I mean, JC, IRJC is a national army, and a national army cannot be listed as terrorist group, and certainly it is not acceptable. That is very important for Iranians to have uh, JC or C from the list, mm -hmm. removed from the list. Mm -hmm. That is very important. And, but that is not the only issue. There are other issues that have to be resolved, including guarantee mm -hmm. that uh, the American administration would not withdraw anymore mm -hmm. in the future, and other issues. I, I, I told you that there are 500 mm -hmm. names, entities, and personalities who are listed mm -hmm. and sanctioned. And most of these have economic impact on Iranian relation with the Western countries. Mm -hmm. Enrique Mora was in Tehran yesterday. What message will he take to Washington? I don't know uh, what Washington would understand from what had been said in Tehran. But the real thing is that uh, IRGC is very important for Iranian. They, they're not going to compromise on that. And that is something that has to happen has to happen, has to be removed from the list. Is the Nizam ready for a deal? We have been always ready for the deal, but depends if our requirements would be met or not. We have did many deals 
after a revolution, and right now we are ready to deal for a deal. But uh, uh, I mean, just deal that our national interests will be met. How has Russia's war in Ukraine changed the calculus for Tehran? It all depends on how it move. It would move. Right now, certainly, our position is an active neutrality. We are in contact with both sides, and certainly we cannot endorse uh, invasion of other countries. We have been invaded. We have been aggressed. For eight years, we have been in war, and we understand the pain of people who have been invaded. We believe it's only through negotiations that this issue can be resolved. And the realities are indicating this right now. Therefore, it all depends how it would be developed in the future. But certainly, regardless of the lose or win of Russians in this war, there would be strategic changes. There would be more division between West and East. And this would have a lot of impacts on different areas, including Middle East. And we have to be ready for that. I mean, with respect, um, the, the Iranian position um, on, on what is going on at the moment ignores Russia's violations of international law and military that, uh, and military that has waged a ruinous, deadly campaign, of course, uh, on the people of Ukraine. There are economic interests clearly um, in, here in uh, Tehran's relations with Moscow, um, which must have made it quite galling that the, it was the Russians who nearly derailed this deal, wasn't it? Russians have been provoked, no question about that. Provocation was the spread of uh, NATO toward Russian borders against the negotiations they had before with American and Western countries. Uh, and this is not only Russian, which have been invaded other countries. There have been many other powers, including the United States, which have invaded many other countries, including Europe, including Panama, including uh, other places. And uh, the question of human rights you mentioned, unfortunately, has been misused, politicized. Human rights should not be politicized. Right. And uh, right now, we understand that American media are very powerful and forcefully uh, work on that that human rights is abused in Ukraine. And this is reality, I don't deny that. But in the meantime, they are quite silent about other places of misuse of human rights, including Yemen, this including Afghanistan, we, including other places. Moving away from the deal Israel. somewhat, I, I, the, the point of bringing Russia up was really because it has a, a, enormous impacts uh, on these negotiations at present, and certainly looks as if it could be a deal breaker at one point. L let's get back to the deal. Um, you've talked about these economic sanctions. I want to come back to the IRGC, by the way, but uh, let, let's just talk about the lifting of, of the economic sanctions at this point. How quickly does Tehran expect to see the real benefits of the lifting of these sanctions, if indeed this, this deal is struck? That is why we have stressed the issue of verifying lifting sanctions. We have to have a period of time to verify if really the position of lifting sanction is working and to make sure that from the day after that we can have economic relations, normal economic relations with others. And uh, that is what uh, our negotiator has been stressing for. 
I want to just come back to the issue that, that you didn't really address when I, when I put it to you earlier on. The IRGC pushing to be delisted as a foreign terror organization. If that doesn't happen and this deal doesn't get done, back home in Tehran, the guards will ha be seen as having damaged the opportunity for Iran's future going forward, surely. And how will that go down? I don't agree with you. Back in Tehran, are emphasizing, if you ask everyone in Tehran, they know that it was IRGC which has saved the country against uh, Daesh, because Daesh was in Syria and with Iraq moving toward collapse of Baghdad and Damascus and moving toward Iran. And it was IRGC which saved Iran. IRGC is the symbol of Iranian security power. And therefore, everyone in Iran is respecting IRGC and emphasizing that IRGC has to be removed from the list. Let me tell you, the relation of IRGC and economic activities in Iran. You know, IRGC has several important economic Stead. entities, mm -hmm. which has a lot of impacts on the Iranian mm -hmm. economy. Mm -hmm. And if IRGC would not be removed from the least, naturally the normal economic cooperation between Iran and outside would not happen. Mm -hmm. Therefore, it's very important, not only from the uh, issue of uh, national uh, pride of Iranian, mm -hmm but also from the economic. And seen in this effect. region uh, by many as a massively malignant force, seen by the Americans and this region, many countries in this region as, as a terror organization. I mean, you know, I, I'm just, I'm wondering how close you genuinely believe negotiators are to a deal being struck whereby sanctions are lifted on the IR. GC. I mean, certainly from the perspective of many in this region, uh, that will be a massive issue. What do you think, what do you think about the region? Uh, you mean that, uh, uh, I don't understand you, what, what is the region? The re this region, the region of the Middle yeah. East. Oh. And the, ex the, the, the malign force, the sponsored activity by, by groups associated with the IRGC and, and the IRGC itself. This is not correct. This is not correct. If you refer to the people in the region, for example, in Iraq, in Lebanon, in Syria, in Yemen, in many other countries, mm. they all respect IRGC as a power so with respect. which can be very helpful. Look in, in Iraq. Who was You're looking at this through the prism of, 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 of the IRGC at this point. I mean, the, in this region, the idea for, for Gulf states, for, for many in this region, the, the idea of the IRGC not being deemed a terror organization is, is ridiculous. I didn't uh, understand your meaning, but what do you mean? Could you repeat that? I, I, I think it's important that we talk about the current regional environment. Um, how does a delisting of the IRGC work for this region, who see the group as a malign force, and for Washington? You know, those who are against IRGC in the region, that is because they are dependent on big power like Americans. Otherwise, people of the region, when you go to Iraq, you go to Lebanon, you go to Syria, you go to other, other independent countries, they understand the value of IRGC and the role that IRGC has been playing in combating terrorist groups. The example is in Syria and Iraq. They were the power and the forces which fought with uh, Daesh. Otherwise, uh, Let's talk about this regional environment. What, what, what does Tehran make of these shifting relationships in the Middle East? Syria welcomed back into the Arab fold, Israel improving ties with, with countries in the per Persian Gulf. 
what's the, percep what's the perception in Tehran of, of, of these shifting relationships at present? No, we welcome that. We welcome that Amir, the Syrian would be, uh, uh, I mean, uh, welcomed back to uh, Arab nations. We welcome that because it's the time that Syria has to be reconstructed. And that by itself shows the correctness of our policy mm. in supporting the government of Syria against the terrorist groups. Unfortunately, some of the countries in the region, Arab countries and non-Arab countries, mm. were supporting those terrorist groups. And it was the right policy of Iran, a strategic policy of Iran, to support the government of Syria and not, a, not, a, not let it to, to be collapsed. And now everyone is trying to connect with Syrian government, and we welcome that. That is, that is the right policy. If the deal doesn't happen, is Tehran ready for more pressure? And will Iran increase enrichment if a deal isn't? More pressure for what? You know, American exerted maximum pressure on Iran. But later, they themselves said it was disgracefully a failure, the maximum pressure. So what other pressures they can exert on Iran? And we have been ready to uh, stand forth and to continue our economy. If you come to Iran, it would be strange for you because even under such a maximum pressure, mm. everything is available in the market. Everything available in the market. Maybe something which is not, I mean, available in other markets you can find in Iran. Yeah, I think you'd ask the average Iranian. And, the, the, and, the, and the most of the needs of Iranians of are manufactured in Iran these days. And why Iran has been so successful in opposing and resisting against these sanctions? Because the will of the people. It is true that there have been a lot of pressure on Iranian an enormous amount of pressure. <laughs> oh, yeah, sure. No, no question. But against that, they have resisted these pressures for their national pride. Better that a deal they is struck today than not, though. For the benefit of Iran, you are telling me today, though, surely, that it is better that a deal is struck than not struck at this point. Briefly. No, we are for deal. We are for deal mm. to be signed because naturally we would, have the, we would like to have a normal relation with others. Mm -hmm. And there certainly Iranian economy needs uh, foreign relations, no question about that. But on what price? Mm -hmm. We are not going to, uh, I mean, the, uh, do anything against or independence. We are an independent country and uh, we are proud of that and we cannot tolerate any submission. We, we are not prepared to submit. And uh, therefore, it's very important to have a deal mm -hmm. and to have normal relation with others, mm -hmm. but on on price. Dr. Kamal Kharazi, thank you very much indeed. That's 20 minutes. We wanted to, to spend some time talking to you today. It's been great, and thank you uh, for engaging with me. I'm going to let you leave the stage at this point, and I want to bring up um, Rob Malley, who is the U.S. Special Envoy for Iran. Thank you very much. It was my pleasure.